In the book of 2 Kings. The book of 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 22. We're going to do a little reading. Teaching tonight. Well, it's going to bless you. Second Kings 22, verse 1 down to 20. And then the next chapter, 23, 1 down to 3. It said Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. Eight years old. And he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jediah, Jedida, the daughter of Adadiah and Boscath. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the way of David his father and turned not aside to the right hand nor to the left. So he did everything God said do. He did everything his father did. And it came to pass in the eighth year of King jo Josiah that the king sent Shaphan to go up to Hekiah, to Hekiah, the high priest. I'm sorry, I skipped. And it came to pass in the eighth year of King Josiah that the king sent Shaphan, the son of Ezeliah, the son of Meshulam, the scribe, to the house of the Lord. So he sent a man, the scribe named uh, Shaphan, uh, up to the house of the Lord, saying, Go up. To Hilkiah the high priest. Y'all go together that he may sum the silver which is brought unto the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the door have gathered of the people. I want you to go and sum, give me a count of the silver that is brought into the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the door have gathered. Amen. The people bring the silver and gold in, and the keepers gathered. Just give me a give me a count. And let them deliver it it into the, the hands of the doers of the work. So whatever you count it, he said give that money to those that's doing the work. He said deliver it unto the hand of the doers of the work that have the oversight of the house of the Lord. Let them give it to the doers of the work which is in the house of the Lord to repair the breaches of the house. We know the breaches of the gap in the wall, the barriers. Amen. It's the it's to it's the defense. It's the, especially one made by an, an attack of an army. So you wanna you wanna fill those those holes in, those breaches. He said, give the money unto the carpenters and builders and masons, and to buy timber and hew stone on stone to repair the house. Howbeit there was no reckoning made with them of the money that was delivered into their hand because they dealt faithfully. In other words, it wasn't no issue. Verse 8 said, And Hilkiah, the high priest, said unto Shaphan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. It's a book that was lost. But he found this book. And Shaphan the scribe came to the king and brought the king word again and said, Thy servant have gathered the money that was found in the house and have delivered it into the hand of them that do the work, that have the oversight of the house of the Lord. And Shaphan the scribe showed the king saying, Hilkiah the priest had delivered me book and Shaphan read it before the king. Y'all follow me? Verse 11 said, and it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book of the law that he ran his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah the priest verse 13 to go, go ye Inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah 
concerning the words of this book that is found. In other words, I, he said, I want you to go and seek the Lord for me concerning what you found. Seek the Lord. And he said, for great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according unto all that which is written concerning us. So Hilkiah the priest and these names look went to Huldah the prophet. And remember he told him he commanded the priest he told him to go and call the Lord concerning the words in this book. So he went unto a, a prophetess. You can't tell me a man can't talk to a woman. He went to a prophetess. These men today, boy, they so male chauvinist, they won't even ask a prophetess. So he went unto Huldah, the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikia, the son of Horas, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in her college and they communed with her. They knew that she was a prophetess and she had a word from the Lord. And the king Josiah wanted to, un to understand what is the meaning? What, what, what is this book about? The Bible said that she said it to them. Thus said the Lord of Israel. Tell the man that sent you to me. Thus said the Lord. Behold I will bring evil upon this place. And upon the inhabitants thereof. Even all the words. Of the book which the king of Judah had read. Because they have forsaken me. And have burnt incense unto other gods. That they might provoke me to anger. With all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be kindled against this place. And shall not be quenched. But to the king of Judah, which is Josiah, which sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall you say to him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, as touching the words which thou hast heard, because thine heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord, when thou heardest what I spoke, Take against this place and against the inhabitants thereof that they should become a desolation and a curse and has ripped thy clothes and because he wept before me I also have heard thee said the Lord behold therefore I will gather you unto your fathers and thou, sh and thou be gathered unto thy grave in peace and that I shall not, shall not see all the evil which I bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. And so in that book it was showing Josiah how far off Israel was off. <laughs> that book was the book of Moses. It was the law that was lost. And God was showing the king that his people was far off and far away from God. He didn't know he was doing wrong. He didn't know they was that far off until they found the ancient book. Look at 23, verse 1 down to 3. And the king sent and they gathered unto him all the elders, all the preachers, so to speak, the scribes of Judah and of Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord and all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him. And the priests and the prophets and all the people, both small and great, he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant which was found in the house of the Lord. A word, just, a word just dropped in my spirit right there. 
And the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book. And all the people stood to the covenant. My thought, we're going to do some study, but my thought's coming from verse 8. And Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the Lord in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan and he read it. The word of the Lord said to me, he said the body of Christ, the churches, all of us, that's what he said. We have to go back and do it God's way. We, we got to go back and, and do it God's way. And I learned I can't run a church based off of emotion. I can't run a church based off of how I feel. I got to go back in, to this book and find out, find out what God wants to do. Before we get into this, we're going to do some stuff. Some study a little bit on Josiah to give you some understanding about him. You got your Bibles? Brothers and sisters, Josiah, the 16th king of, Egypt, of, of, of Judah, was a godly man, unlike his grandfather Manasseh and his father Ammon. Manasseh and Ammon was evil kings. But Josiah, the son of them, was a godly king. Josiah turned to the Lord with all his heart and soul and strength, obeying all the laws of Moses. You know, he was doing right before he even found out about the book. He was doing right. His heart was right. The king, the kingdom of Judah was grossly idolatrous and, and wicked during Manasseh's reign. Despite Manasseh's uh, reign, I'm sorry, despite Manasseh's own repentance toward the end of his reign, conditions continued to worsen under his son Ammon, who was so bad, his own officials assassinated him. And the eight year old Josiah was placed on the throne. Look at um, chapter 21 of the same book. 20, chapter 21 and verse 23. Just giving you a little background. Look at verse 23. And the, the servant of Amma conspired against him and slew the king in his own house. And the people of the land slew all them that had conspired against King Ammon. Boy, you see this boy's war. And the people of the land made Josiah the son of his son, king, in his stead. So that's how Josiah came. He was the son of Ammon. And after Ammon passed away, then eight-year-old Josiah became king. So when Josiah was 16, he began to seek the God of his ancestors, David. Look at 2 Chronicles real quick, 34. Show you this young man came on strong. Second Chronicles 34 and 3. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles 34 and 3 says, For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was yet young, he began to seek after God, the God of David, his father. And in the twelfth year, he began to Purge Judah and Jerusalem from the high places and the groves and the carved images and the mountain images. And so from this point on, he was dedicated to purifying the worship of the people of God. He wanted to purify them. From anything that's unclean, 
idol worship, false gods. He said he was, but, but, but notice that desire sprung from a young man seeking God. Because when you seek God, you will have a desire to clean up what's messed up. Come on now. It came, it came, from, it came from him seeking God. Hallelujah. You know, when you seek the face of God, you want purity. Because seeking God breeds that. When you don't pray, you don't seek God, then you you opening yourself up to all kinds of impurities. Because, you know, when you seek God, you're seeking cleansliness. When you seek God, he's clean. And, and there's a difference between prayer and seeking God. Praying is talking to God. But seeking God is waiting in his presence for answers. He couldn't purge Jerusalem and Judah without directions from God. Hallelujah. Oh, y'all hear me? He, he couldn't do it without that. And so from this point on, he was dedicated to purifying the worship of the people of God. So at 20 years old, Josiah began eradicating pagan places of worship especially the despised cult center of Bethlehem y'all follow me now Josiah fulfilled a prophecy I'm going to show y'all this Look real quick turn to 1 Kings chapter 13 1 Kings chapter 13 now this was prophesied over Josiah years before he was born 1 Kings Chapter 13, look at verse 1. Hallelujah. Y'all follow me? All right. All right. And he said, and behold, there came a man of God. Now, nobody know who this man of God is. You just say, there came a man of God out of Judah. By the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. So God sent a prophet to Jeroboam. While Jeroboam was sitting there burning incense at the altar. And he cried. Who? The prophet. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord. And said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord. Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David. Josiah by name. And upon thee shall he offer the priest of the high place that burnt incense upon thee. And men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. In other words, he would have burned the bones of the prophets. He said, this altar here you, 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 you practicing on? He said, this altar is going to come down. It's going to be one named Josiah. Oh God, he's going to, he's going to, he, he, upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee. And men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day saying, I'm going to prove this to you, I'm going to show you. This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent or split in two. And the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. In other words, God going to split this altar. And any time the ashes is poured out, that means that sacrifice is unclean. And God split that altar. God gave him a sign that what I'm telling you is going to come to pass. So look, let's go back to your, your uh, back to where we was. So Josiah fulfilled the prophecy in 1 Kings 13, 1 and 3 by destroying his altars and burning the bones of pagan priests to desecrate the site. Y'all want to see where that? Look at chapter 23 of 2 Kings. I told you you need the Bible. Y'all understanding? Any questions? All right. 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 15. You get it? Say amen. I'm in the right place. Okay, you ready? Moreover, the altar that was at Bethel and the high place which Jerob, remember? Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel the sin had made both the altar and the high place he who broke down Josiah he broke down and burnt the high 
place and stamped it small to powder and burnt the grove. And as Josiah turned himself, he spied the sepulchres that were there in the mount and sent and took the, remember this, took the bones out of the sepulchres and burnt them up on the altar. This was prophesied. And pollute, polluted it according to the word of the Lord, which the man of God proclaimed. Who proclaimed these words? This telling me they don't make him a false prophet because the prophecy didn't come to pass in your lifetime. Because people have passed away. Jer Jeroboam been gone. When a man of God speak by the word of God, that word is going to come to pass, whether sooner or whether later. And it came to pass just like the man of God said. Look at verse 17. Then he said, what title is that that I see? And the man of the city told him, it is the sepulcher of the man of God, which came from Judah and proclaim these things that thou hast done against the altar of Bethel. In other words, Josiah, the man that prophesied you that you're going to do this, that's where his grave is. That's the grave of the prophet that prophesied you speaking against the altar and burning the, the, the bones of dead men on them. <laughs> Look at verse 18. And he said, let him alone. Let no man move his bones. So they let his bones alone. And the bones of the prophet, they came from Samaria. You see that? It came to pass. And you know something? Who knows if you are, prof if you are a prophecy that have come true right now? What if somebody prophesied in your generations prior to you coming? That your great-grandson your great granddaughter is going to be under a ministry that's going to help them to get to where they got. Your great grandson, your great granddaughter, going to be a minister or a preacher of the gospel. And that word didn't die, but the vessel that did die. Oh, the spirit of that vessel still living, but it's dead now. But that word that came out of his mouth. It's still working. It's still working. It's still moving. You a prophecy. Somebody saw you coming. And notice God don't prophesy fools. To do, or I mean, he might prophesy there's going to be ones that going to come to, to do this. Notice if he prophesies somebody, they're going to do some damage or they're going to do some good. But even if he prophesies no drunkards because they already here. Your son, Junior, you're going to be a drunkard all his life. So what is a drunkard going to do? I can understand if he prophesied to Hitler. Because Hitler was evil. Look at the damage he done. But, but when God speak a prophetic word of somebody to come, they're going to come with some kind of effect on the earth one way or the other. Jesus was prophesied all through the Old Testament to come. Look what he was. The Messiah. The God in the flesh. Judah was prophesied in the Old Testament. Look what he did. John the Baptist. See? And so, any great man of God or woman of God was a word already spoken before they got here. It was already, God already seen them. A word came forth. And it happened. I, you know, I believe this. A lot of words, a lot of God's mind, I believe, that his mind and his purpose cannot come to pass to somebody speaking. It's got to be spoken. <laughs> On this earth realm, it's got to get be spoken. Such and such is coming. Certain things, the word got to be made flesh. 
That word got to be spoken. And it happens. Y'all come on somebody. It already, it already been spoken. Some things got to be spoken. God said, I do nothing but reveal my secrets to, to my servants. But once the servants speak it, it's no more a secret. It's open. Now you're waiting for it to happen. It's God's mind. Some things, not all things, but some things cannot happen till they reveal it. Look at, so, so in the process, so through all this, then we're getting back to where we started from. So I started from the end, working my way back up to the front. So, so in the process, Hekiah found the book of the law and read it to Josiah, who was devastated by his pronouncements against apostasy and sought more fully to obey God's instructions and to lead the people in worshiping the Lord. When he, he didn't realize that the people had went so far back from God. He didn't know it until he read the law. Notice nobody prophesied what the, 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 the prophets prophesied what the book meant. But she couldn't prophesy apart from what God said. So Josiah realized, man, I did not realize that these people was apostates. And they was worshiping other gods. So he sought fully, more fully to obey God's instructions and to lead the people in worshiping the Lord. He celebrated Passover as the law demanded, destroyed many artifacts used in Baal and sun worship, and eliminated pagan shrines in Judah. Let's go here real quick. Chapter 23, verse 4. Let's read it down to 14 real quick. Let's just read a few things that he done. Now watch this. These things you're about to read, after he found out, went back, and found out what God said, he decided to do it God's way. Oh, oh y'all hear me? He didn't know until he read it. He thought he was okay until he read it. Mm. <laughs> That's right. Uh, 2 Kings 23, 4 down, to, uh, 4 down to 14. You ready? We're going to do a little reading. And the king commanded Hekiah, the high priest, and the priest of the second order, and the keepers of the door, to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord the vessels that were made for Baal. In other words, they were made for, for Baal. In other words, these vessels, these, these utensils, that was made for the, for the devil, get them out this house. Let's get it out the house. Let's clear this house. Remember I told y'all Sunday, we got to rebuild the altars. That means we got to get some stuff out. He said, listen, bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that was made for for Baal and for the grove and for all the host of heaven. And he burnt them without, without Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. In other words, when I get them out, he said, we ain't going to keep them. We're going to destroy them. It's going to have to be some things getting destroyed out the house of God. It's got to be some things destroyed at your life. But you won't know it until you read the word. We got to go back to the manual and let's find out what God said. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? We, we can't just do it the way we feel or do it the way I feel. I think, I think this word has got to be done. Oh, I feel it's got to be done. Oh, I'm so frustrated. I'm going to do it like this. God said, no, you can't, you can't do it being frustrated. You, you can't do, you can't purge being frustrated. You can't purge and clean out what needs to be cleaned through being angry. And you can't do it through opinions. you got to find the word of God and find out what he wants you to do. And do it just like that. If you do it like that, then you're going to have what God said you could have. Y'all better give God some praise. Oh, y'all hold on. So it get real good. Y'all hold on. Look at verse 5. And he put down the idolatrous priest. 
whom the king of Judah had ordained to burn incense. In other words, don't go who you are. You coming down, you idolatrous priest. The idolatrous priest, the ones that were serving idols, he took them out the house. You know what he's doing? Cleaning house. <laughs> he's cleaning the house. Notice he's getting these priests out of there. Don't I take you? But, but, but notice the first person he got out was the priest. He started with the leaders. <laughs> Boy, he ain't playing. And he said, in the high places of the city of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem, them also <laughs> that burn incense and the bell to the sun and to the moon. And to the planets, to the planets, and to all the host of heaven. And he brought out all the grove from the house of the Lord. Without Jerusalem and the brook Kendron, and burnt it, all, burnt it at the brook Kendron. And stamped it small to powder, and cast the powder thereupon the graves and the children of the people. And he broke down the houses of the Sodomites. He said, I'm getting this junk out this house. Whoa! He said, I, I gotta listen. He said, I didn't come to play. He said, once I heard what God said, Sodomites, you gotta get up out of there. He broke down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord and where the women were hanging for the grove. And he brought all the priests out of the cities of Judah and defiled the high places where the priests had burned incense. From Geba to Beersheba and broke down the high places of the gates that were in the entering of the gate of Joshua, the governor of the city, which were on a man's left hand at the gate of the city. He broke down the high places. He broke down the gates. He broke down anything. Nevertheless, the priest of the high places came not up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem. But they did eat the unleavened bread among their brother. In other words, the high priest, listen, they didn't come up to the high, to the high places. They didn't come up to the altar. Because some of them was, was, was fired. But some of them did come to the unleavened bread among their brother. That's a celebration. And he defiled Tophet, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnon. That no man might make his son or daughter to pass through the fire to Molech. Remember, they were sacrificing children. He stopped all that too. And he took away the horses that the kings of Judah had given to the sun. Poor horses. Y'all got to get out of here too. Even though you're innocent, you're still guilty. Because you was used to worship idols with. See, you can't worry about who innocent if you connected to that. If you connected to the problem. Oh, y'all better hear me. <laughs> and he took away the horses that the kings of Judah had given to the sun at the entering in of the house of the Lord by the chamber of Nathan Melech, the cherubim, the chamberlain, which was in the suburbs and burnt the chariots of the sun with fire. And the altars that were on the top of the upper chambers of Ahaz which the kings of Judah had made and the altars which Manasseh his grandfather had made in the two courts of the house of the Lord did the king beat down and broke them down from thence and cast the dust of them into the brook of Kentron look at verse 13 in the high places that were before Jerusalem which were on the right hand of the mount of corruption which Solomon the king of Israel had built it for Ashrod he broke that down the abominations of the Zodians and for uh, Chemosh, the abomination of the Moabites, and for Milcom, the abomination of the children of Ammon, did the king defile. Verse 14, and he broke in pieces the images and cut down the groves and filled their places with bones of men. Y'all, he cleared house. And it started with going back. And let's see what God have to say about it. Y'all, you can't deviate. 
and I, I feel what this is saying to us is once we go back and, and compare what we do to the word. And if our life or our construction in the house of God or our activities in the house of God is off, we got to repent of it and correct it. We have to go back and do what God say. Come on, we got to do it God's way. We got to go back to Shabbat. We got to go back to the book and find out what did God say about it. And I was talking to the Lord about, you know, I was saying testimony service. I'm going to cut that and I'm going to cut some of the singing. And I heard the Lord say to me, he said, what good is that going to do? I said, okay. I said, Lord, but I'm trying to do some things differently. But God said to me, what good is cutting testimony? Go, I heard it. Because the Lord said the easy thing to do is cut it. But the hard thing to do is fix it. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. You hear me? What, what good is I heard the Lord say, what good are you cutting the music for? It's easy to cut the music. But, but can you fix it? The Lord said, I know that you to fix it. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you hear what I said? I'm just being honest with you. I said to the Lord, I said, God, and I'm being straight with you. I'm going to take, he got me now. So some of these members acting a fool. So Lord, if they want to go on, let them go. The Lord asked me, what good is it going to do if they go? Because if some of them leave, they're going straight to hell. He said, some of them cannot afford to leave. Because if they leave, they ain't gonna, they're going to be like a sheep that's lost without a shepherd. God said, me purging them from here is not, what that's going to do. He said, I called you to fix it. <laughs> he said, I called, he said, I've anointed you to fix the people. I said, how am I going to do it? Go back. And do it God's He said, go back. And do it God's way. And I heard him. He said, now, you cannot help the folks that don't, don't really want to be at church. Don't really want to serve him. You can't help them. Don't have. They don't want no. They have no conviction of sin. But he said to me that some, they going through a, a change. They going through a battle, but they want God, and it look like they. It look like they standing off. They look like they don't want to be there. But God said those are the ones that I anointed you to help fix. How oh God? You have to go back. Easy thing to do is uh, go ahead. Then. You want to leave? Go ahead. What have I accomplished? Y'all got quiet on me. And I'm thinking, I'm, you know, that's how I feel. But God said to me, He said, You He said, You operate not fulfilling. And not out of what I said. You gotta go back. Look in the book of the law and find out what it's gonna take. Watch this. The Bible said, Hilkah the high priest said in the Shaphan described, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. He said to me, the instructions is already in here. But I just need you Make them uh, 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 implement it. Pull out what I put in here. 
Make this place a place of worship. Make it a place when we lift our hands. There's no static coming through the house. Make it a place when you testify. The power of God come down in the house. Y'all better hear what I'm saying here. We got it. Lord have mercy. Listen, it's in the law of the Lord to get the people ready and excited again about the things of God. It's some folks drowning. They needing help. But God said, I'm anointed you. Lord have mercy. Because if, 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 if I wasn't anointed to do it, you wouldn't be here. Because once the anointing leaves, there's nothing to destroy the yoke. There's nothing in the church to destroy what's attached to you. That thing that's trying to pull you out of church. As long as there's an anointing in the house. Oh, oh y'all understand what I'm saying? Then, there is a potential of rescuing people from the snare of the enemy. You know, what proves to, what, 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 what proves to anybody that a ministry is a deliverance ministry. Okay? For them to say, to know that that is a deliverance ministry because they cast out devils. That is, that's narrow-minded. That's only a part of it. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Casting out devils is a very small part of it. But a deliverance ministry is when you can heal the broken heart. Oh, y'all. <laughs> it's when you can fix the wounds. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? It's when you can when you can help those that's about to lose their mind, bring it back to. Hey, come on. Y'all better hear what hey. I'm saying. It's more than it's cut out, cut out. That's the easy way, which we should do. But but do you have a, an anointing preacher? That's well rounded enough to to heal the broken hearted. Set the captives free. To proclaim the, 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 the year release of the Lord. Are you able, amen, to preach them to, and to bring enough strength in your preaching to bring them back to a state to say, you know what, that word convicted me. I got to get that. See, that's the, that's the deliverance ministry. Come on, somebody. They have measured deliverance ministry to there's somebody casting out devils. To somebody that can just work miracle signs and wonders. That's not just it. You got to be able, my God, to bring them back to life. <laughs> Y'all better shut up. You got to have enough breath in your ministry to resuscitate them. <laughs> Watch this. It don't take, listen, it takes time to resuscitate. It's not instant, is it? You working with them. said to me, he said that instant stuff don't qualify a ministry to be a ministry of deliverance. But what qualifies that ministry is when the power of that house and the message behind that pulpit can change the hearts. When that message and when that preacher can look back at the word and say, wait a minute, this off. We've got to make some adjustments. <laughs> and the adjustments is made. Oh man, that's what, that's what you call deliverance ministry. Oh, oh y'all hear me? And so in verse 8, let's just look back at her again. Just want to do a little teaching tonight. We're going to get out of here. We got to go back, y'all. I told the Lord, I said, I'm going all the way back, and I, I got I to gotta go back and search it. Because I don't want to be like this. Look at what he said, verse 8, in eight 9, 8 through 10. He said, and Hilkiah, the high priest, 
said unto Shaphan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hekiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. And so some, some, people, some people believe that this is the five books of the, New, of the Old Testament, which is the Torah. They found the first five books, amen, of the Bible. Of the Bible. Shaphan reported the momentous discovery immediately and read it to the king. Let's just skip. And look at verse 11. I'm sorry, verse 10. And Shaphan, the scribe, showed the king, saying, Hekiah, the priest, had delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. Let me tell you something. A pastor got to be humble enough. If somebody show him he's error, he got to say, well, you know, you know what? Do what you showed me. You're right. The Bible, the Bible says that this priest showed this to the king. We off, king. Look at what the books say compared to what's going on in your king. Y'all quiet on me. Why are you going to do this for, why, 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 scribe, why are you showing them this? Because we all in this together. And king, no changes can be made unless you make them. Y'all got quiet here now. No benefit going to happen to none of us. Unless you make that change. Look at verse 11. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book of the law. He rent his clothes. You know what that word rent and clothes mean? That means he went in sorrow. It, it broke his heart. And it said, and the king commanded Hilkiah the priest and all these other fellows. <laughs> saying, go ye inquire the Lord for me. And for the people, for all of you. Look. He said, first of all, inquire of the Lord for me first. Because a good leader going to put himself first. Not only are they in error, I was in error. So what I want you to do, scribe, go and inquire of the Lord for me. He was a king. He wasn't a priest. Jos Josiah was a king. He wasn't a priest. The priest was able to commune with God. Oh, y'all hear me? The king wasn't a priest, nor was he a prophet. If you notice in the story, there was a priest and there was a prophetess. Right? And go ye and inquire the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book. To do according to all that which is written concerning us. In other words, it's our fathers is what started all this idol worship. And because of them, we are under the wrath of God. That's why I learned you can't just run a church based off of what you've been told. Or because they passed it down to you. And you found error in what they taught. You can't just keep running a church because those in front of you pass it down to you for you to keep running and they was in error. Y'all quiet on me. I don't care who they were. If they was running the church in error before they pass it down to you and now it's in your hands, you got to fix it. Just because it's a tradition. But when you find the law, y'all better hear me. When you know the book for yourself. Because some of these traditions that are passed, I'm going to be straight up with you, passed down in some of these churches, some of the founders couldn't even read. Some of them had bad understandings. Some of them just made laws that weren't even Bible. Y'all come on. You couldn't even find some of the stuff they believe in the Bible. They, back in the days, if you were red, you were the devil. You going to hell for wearing red. And it passed down from generation and heard folks believe that. And there's no scripture to support it. But I believe this. There's a point in every pastor's ministry. Well, God's going to reveal to him the misconceptions that he was taught. 
Y'all quiet. Because the time came in Josiah's ministry where the book was found. Y'all better hear me now. The time came. Well, he said, wait a minute. Manasseh, my granddaddy, and Ammon, my father, was wrong. They passed this down to me, and they was wrong in how they handled it. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. You got a, a pastor, a leader. Yes, you believe what your father's taught. But you got to search it out. Y'all come on somebody. You, gotta, you don't want to be passing those lines down to the next one. To the next pastor, the next one after that, and the next one after that. You got to, boy, y'all better hear what I'm saying. We got to go back and find out how to do it God's way. Oh, oh y'all hear me now. We, we got to go back and find out how to do it God's way. Y'all, oh my God, have mercy. So he said, look, he said, go inquire the Lord for me. And for the people, for all Judah, concerning the words of this book that is found, for great is the anger, the wrath of God that is kindled against us because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book and to do according to all that which is written concerning us. So, so like Hezekiah before him, Josiah tore his clothes in genuine grief for his own spiritual condition and that of the people of Judah. The portion that Shaphan read to Josiah apparently remind him of God's claim upon his people. The need was his claim, the need for faithfulness to the covenant, the penalties for infidelity. You can read that in Deuteronomy chapter 28, all those. If you obey, this will happen to you. If you disobey, all that will happen to you. So recognizing that Judah had failed to obey the law, Josiah rightfully feared the Lord's anger. Boy, let me tell you, preachers got to get back to fearing God's anger. Let me right. cut it around. <laughs> I see. You know, we, we got to, we have the, thank you, Lord. We have to fear more of God's anger than we fear of losing tradition. Y'all better hear me. Y'all quiet will be. I don't want to. This in the family tree here. We've been having a, a missionary day. And all these yes. And all them devil missionaries up there. Granddaddy pass them on to me. Let me tell you something. If you holy, you'll set them devils down, won't you? <laughs> Come on. Well, I, your granddaddy didn't set me down, but I did. Get down, evil. Oh, oh y'all hearing me here? And so the Bible said in verse 20, so here could the priest and all these other fellas, they went to this woman called Hilda the prophetess. And they commune with her. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a good thing for a man of God to have a prophet around. Or a prophetess. Because God will use them to tell the leader what God say. Y'all better hear me. And what I like about this story is he wasn't too much of a king to go and inquire of a prophet. Y'all better hear me. I don't understand everything. Can you reveal to me what is God saying? I understand what the law is saying, but what is God saying? Why did God bring this book to us? I, I know he brought it to us to obey. I know he brought it to us to get things back in order. But what is it God saying that I'm not hearing because I know it's something else? Y'all hear me? So evidently he wasn't satisfied with just reading it. He wasn't just satisfied knowing, man, listen, I feel bad about this. We got to change this. I, but, but in his spirit, I felt like he knew it's something more. Oh, wow, we found this. It's more than just correcting. It's more than just changing things and putting it in order. What is your other purpose? 
She's going to tell you in verse 15. And she said unto them, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Tell the man that sent you. Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon. This is why. God for to bring wrath. And, and let me tell y'all something. God never brings judgment without warning you first. Oh, God is not going to... He said pride coming before a fall. God will warn you about your pride and your sins. He said, not only did I, um, Josiah, allow you to find this book to correct it, but I want to show you what's on God's mind. He said, thus said the Lord, behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah had read. Not only, oh, I see it, Lord, I thank you. He said, not only... I'm going to allow you to read the instructions. But I'm going to allow you to read the judgment. That's going to come out the same book. The same book got law. But in the same book also prophesied judgment. To come for those that don't obey it. And I believe she's telling the king, listen, in your lifetime, you can escape this judgment. If you just get it right. Y'all better hear me. I'll come and tell us in here. You can escape judgment if you get it. Y'all better hear me. Y'all better hear me. You can, you can escape the, the anger of the Lord if you just turn it around. Y'all, God, listen, when he bring the word like Sunday, it was strong. Watch this. He said it's strong because the rap to follow it is just as strong as the word that was delivered. The word that you found in the temple is strong. But the evil judgment to follow is just as strong. So what I'm trying to do, he's saying, I need you to go back and find out my way of doing it. So you can stop What's about to come upon you? Oh, y'all following me here. Just said the Lord, behold, I will bring evil upon this place. I'm going to do it. And upon the habitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah read, because they have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall be quenched. Show me this fell in my spirit. He said, God's going to bring judgment upon these people that burn incense. Other gods provoked me to anger with all the works of their hands. Now, did he, now did he not just remove all that? We just read it, right? He got rid of all those idol worships, worshipers, those that served the stars and the planets, and the horses with the moon, chariots. But, but God said, I'm still going to get them. And the question is why? Can I tell you why? They was removed by force to stop doing what they're doing. But not by repentance. Wow. <laughs> they didn't stop doing what they're doing through repentance. They stopped doing what they're doing because the Josiah purged them from doing it. Oh, y'all better hear me now. Y'all better hear me. They still gonna get it. They still wanted it. They were removed out of the place, but the place was removed out of them. So God said, because they done this, I'm going to get them. Because they stopped without repentance, but they stopped through force. And if somebody forcing you to stop a behavior, that's not good enough. If you stop through being forced, Come on now. God, I 
I'm still going to get you. You know why? Watch this. The Lord said, I'm not looking at your behavior no more. I'm looking at your heart. So I can preach hard all day. And this word forced you to stop. And I'm feeling guilty. Let me go on it. I stop. God said, I'm still going to get you. I'm still angry with you. But watch this. Because what you've done didn't break your heart because you hurt me. What you've done didn't bother you. You would have kept doing it had not somebody stopped you. Because you went to jail don't mean God said they're going to get you. You out there breaking the cars and houses and stuff and you went to jail. Yeah, because you went to jail and ain't stealing no more. God's wrath still going to get you. Because going to jail don't save you. This is giving you a break from breaking in folks' houses. So, in other words, taking a break in the action of sin is not going to spare you from his judgment. It's going to have to be a repentant heart. That's why we got to go back and find out what do you want? God said a repentant heart. You got to have a heart to say, Lord, listen, I was wrong. I was wrong. Forgive me. And remove yourself from that kind of behavior. God said, I have mercy. I have mercy upon those that repent. Because the message Bible says he's ready to counsel catastrophe. He's ready to counsel catastrophe if you rend your heart and not your garment. Y'all hear this? So God said, listen, go ahead, Josiah, you do this for you. You purge Jerusalem for your sake because your heart is right. But I'm still going to get them. Y'all better hear me now. You know, that's just like painting the spots of a leopard black. He's still a leopard and the spots are still there. He have not stopped being a leopard. Because you painted him black. <laughs> oh, leopard. You messed him up. But you go ahead and try to take his food. His nature ain't changed. See, if God can't change your nature, if God can't change your desires through repentance, then you in trouble, baby. Y'all better hear me. So we got to go back. Hallelujah. And do it. See, this is a part of deliverance ministry. To show you what God... See, I got to show you what you ain't, what you ain't reading. I, I got to show you what you reading, but let's go deeper. If you stop with a behavior because folks are living with you, they live with me now. I want them to see what I'm doing now. I know they about it. It's still there. Because when they go to the grocery store, <laughs> then it comes back up. You, you not doing it because everybody watching you. So I ain't doing it. I ain't done it in a long time because folks been living with you for a long time. <laughs> Y'all better, better hear what I'm saying. It's not true repentance. Because you stop the action. Y'all better hear me. Y'all. You can stop the action all day. If you're not stopping because your heart is broken before God. It's not true repentance. Josiah went through that. Man, we just read it. I mean, boy, taking folks down, burying bones, burning bones on altars. Out of just everywhere. But God said, I'm still going to get them. <laughs> I'm still going to get them. I, they still, they, they are still under my judgment because they have not changed. He was, I'm doing better. I'm doing better. That don't mean nothing. Doing better is one thing. Being whole is another. Y'all, come on. Being whole, being delivered from is a whole different thing. Y'all, come on, somebody. 
I don't do it as much as I used to, but you're still doing it. But when God give you, when God deliver you, you made hope. Y'all come on now. Now watch this. Had these priests and everybody came out that stuff before he purged it. They would have made a whole big, whole, before he made a national purging. If they said, you know, I'm leaving this stuff. See, God, God, would have, God would have had mercy. But because they was forced, he said to them, they provoked me to anger with all the works of their hands. But God, they ain't doing it no more, but I still see their hands doing it. As long as they ain't repented, I still see the work. Because I still remember what you did when you left off from doing it. Because there wasn't no blood to erase it like it never happened. Because the blood covers it and washes it as though it never happened. But you just left it without the, the blood covering it. You left it alone, but there ain't no coverage to it. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. The blood of Jesus washes us of our sins. It cleanses us from all unrighteousness. But to break from it and not get the blood to cover it, God said, I still see your filthy hands. Because by you stopping it, it's your work. But when you repent before me, I give you the grace and the ability to stop that behavior. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. He said, therefore, my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. Y'all better hear me tonight. God said, I'm calling for the saints, all of us, the church, the body of Christ. We got to get back to the old way. Yeah. Let's find out all this new stuff, this stuff they teach and getting folks in trouble. It's a, it's, a, it's a grace without any conviction now. No conviction of sin. They make light of doing wrong. God, just got to forgive you. God, I know you done wrong. Just confess that thing and keep on going. But if you feel anything about it, you feeling guilty. That's the, no, no, conviction. Because if you really love God, it's going to bother you. Y'all quiet. I, I don't think some of these folks love God. You got this, this great stuff and you do this sin and go on like nothing happened. Dad, you don't love God because to hurt God is to hurt you. Y'all better hear me. Lord, I don't. Lord. And the reason why some people, I heard the Lord tell me, he said the reason why some people feel distant from you because they feel distant from me. They feel like they're in a place of nothingness. They've done so much wrong. They feel like they're apart from God. They feel so nasty. They feel so disgusted. And so they just feel so distant from you. Because conviction will make you feel like God. I don't belong to you. You know what that is? God is telling you. You can do better than this. You should be ashamed of yourself. God tell you that. Why? Because I gave you power. Conviction. See, condemnation. You condemn this building. It's gone. Conviction works on it. Instead of instead of condemning the building, Sister Linda, because the light fixture ain't working. The city, the state gonna get on the, 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 the city gonna get on you. You have to fix that. Fix it, or we will knock it down. So conviction means fix it. It's going to show you the wrong. Y'all better hear me. It's going to show you what need fixing, but it's not going to knock it down. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? You know, I'm going to knock this building out because that light ain't working. Boom! It is destroying me. Right? But if you come in here and point, you need, you need fire hoses there. You ain't got that there. You show me where I'm wrong at, right? You got um, wires uncovered over there. You got to fix that. That shouldn't be like that. And you be like, oh, man, you're right. I got to get this still right. That's conviction. And what you do, work on it. And make it happen the way it's supposed to. That's conviction. That's what it does. And, and so if anybody, any saint out there sin because they got grace and don't feel nothing, I mind afraid, Minister Gacia. They are not saved. Because the Holy Ghost hit me. It, it convicts me. Have you, ever, have you ever felt the grievance of the Holy Ghost? That's a bad feeling, ain't it? <laughs> you can feel when he's saddened because of your actions. You're like, oh, man. You can't run from it. You can't sleep it off. 
You can't eat it away. You know what God is saying? You wrong for that. I know you better than this. You've been saved too long. Y'all come on. What did they get you? You know you shouldn't have said that. And because you love righteousness, you feel bad. <laughs> you know what conviction does? It keeps you from entering judgment. He warns you, get this straight. Because if you don't, the wrath of God is coming upon you. He don't, he don't immediately knock you down and condemn you as soon as you do wrong. He trying to tell you, stop this behavior. Well, I'm warning you. I'm warning you. And but if you keep doing it, then some he's out chasing those whom I love. Right? That's the Holy Ghost. You, when you see and you feel so out of, so forward and so God said, no, nah, don't take it as something bad. Take it as a as a pat on the, the behind. Get yourself. Together. Am I right? Because I'm giving you the hand with conviction, but I'm about to bring the bell to beat you. And that's that judgment. Come on, somebody. Huh? <laughs> huh? And pat on the... Uh, get, get you no better than that. <laughs> I just feel so bad. Now, if you can't take the tap on the rear end, you sure can't take the beating. Well, if you break down from his convicting power, you ain't going to last his round. It was judgment, rather. So what you got to do is get on back. So how do I fix this behavior? How do I fix this, Lord? We got we to gotta stop condemning ourselves and get up and fix this. Stop slaying her in this mess. Get yourself up. Find what, out what God's saying. Say, tell the Lord, listen, Lord, who I am. I got to fix this issue. Are y'all hearing me? Then he said, I'm, we're almost done. He said, verse 19, because thine heart was tender. This is what he told. He told in Josiah. He said, I'm going to get them now. Look at verse 18, I'm sorry. He said, but to the king of Judah, which sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall you say to him, thus said the Lord God of Israel, as touching the words which thou hast heard, because thy heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord. When thou, when thou heardest what I shall speak against this city. In other words, he said, when you heard what I said I was going to do, you humbled yourself. You heard the word, you heard the law of an instructions, and you also heard the law of judgment. And when you heard all of that, you humbled yourself. Hallelujah. And my question to y'all is, when them strong words come, what do you do with them? Do you get angry? Don't I'm trying to answer, I'm just, just, just general talking. Do you get angry? Or do you humble yourself and say, you know what, Lord, show me myself. Because that word did not come for nothing. I felt like he was talking straight to me. And he, he was talking to everybody. You know why? Because, you know, a lot of times when you feel like that word is talking straight to you, it's something behind that word coming straight for you. That's some, that's some chastisement coming straight for you. If you don't humble yourself like Josiah did and escape it. So that word comes not to just throw your trash out there. But it comes to show you what you've done wrong. And let you know I'm giving you time to fix it. I'm giving you space to repent. Because I'm not willing that no man should perish. But that all men come to repentance. That's mercy. That word come like that. He said, when Josiah heard it. He wasn't too much king to say, well, uh, but he was the first one to rip his clothes and turn and, and, and humility and grief and sorrow because of what he didn't know. And when I heard is what I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become as desolation and a curse and had rent thy clothes and wept before me. See, the tears of a pastor. Well, before me, I also have heard thee, said the Lord. Uh oh, wait a minute. One sign, I thank you for this. One sign that you can bank on that God heard you 
is when you pray with tears. Hezekiah, I seen your tears. I heard your cry. When you can weep over sin. God, when you can get down and say, God, I'm sorry. I broke your heart. Those tears, God said, I see them tears. Boy, I tell you. I see that brokenness. Because a broken and contrite heart. He would not die now. He would not turn away. You can't tell me God will overlook you when you cry out your heart like your son. Tears came out of my eyes because his heart was broken. Behind what he didn't know. He looked, he said, well, not just them, us. Y'all better hear me. When the last time you cried over sin? Why we always dry eyed when we ask God to forgive us? You know why? Because they ain't really touched him. Lord, forgive me. Keep going. Lord, forgive me. That's dry. Because we're repenting. Y'all shando. Oh, ta la la bullshit. Real repentance. When it's real, God will share with you his broken heart. Y'all better hear me. Because in your nature, you won't cry over sin. So God got to share you with you his heart. He'll share with you his pain. When you serious about forgiveness, he'll let you feel a touch of how he felt. Y'all quiet over here. The Lord said, I can't share with some people a touch of why I feel because they're too hard. They're just too just dry. It just, they'll, say, they'll sin and say, God forgive me, and really don't feel nothing behind it. Just go on forgive me, Lord, I'm sorry. That touched the heart of God. God said, I see them pray. I just see dryness. I hear a dull, repetitive prayer. The same prayer they prayed the last time. Lord, forgive me. I'm wrong. God, forgive me. Wrong. Nothing changed. It wasn't no sorrow. It wasn't no weeping. It wasn't no this. You know why? Because, because when you're really broken over sin, it ain't that easy to go back to it. You, let me tell you what your cry going to be. is not only God, forgive me, but God, help me. Not to go back to that behavior. I don't like what I feel behind it. I don't like the way it makes me feel. God, can you please help me not to go back? That's repentance. Y'all quiet. Y'all, come on now. So the question is, don't answer. When the last time you really broke down, shine die on your face. 